Hello everyone, I am Raghav, one of the teaching assistants in the Intro to Deep Learning course. This is a recitation on Python fundamentals. What is Python? Python is a very high level, versatile and easy to read programming language, which is widely used for deep learning, web development, data analysis, and many more applications. Uh, we will actually be using Python as our main programming language throughout this course. So it is very important to know what is Python and what can we do in Python so that we can build really complex neural network architectures, deep learning architectures using Python. So what data types does Python offer to us? Python offers the numeric data type, which is basically the integer and float data types. Uh, also floats are also known as double uh, in some other programming languages, but for Python float and double are the same. We also have the string data type where uh, a character or string both come under the string data type. You can uh, initialize a uh, string with either double quotes or single quotes as shown here. Python also offers the Boolean data type, which is basically true or false or one and zero in binary. We also have the list data type, which is basically an ordered mutable set of elements, a mutable collection of elements. Ordered because every element can be referred to an order. So the first element in this list is can, the second element will be hello and so on. Mutable because you can add and remove elements to this list. Python also supports lists with mixed data types as shown here, which is an added flexibility to the programming language. We have the tuple data types, which is very similar, but tuple represents an ordered immutable collection of elements. You cannot add or delete elements once the tuple has been created. So this is the difference between tuple and lists. Similarly, we also have the set data type, which is very similar, but set represents, represents an unordered collection of unique elements. There is no order in the list or set per se, but uh, there will only be unique elements in the set. So if you uh, initialize set with duplicate elements, it would uh, combine the duplicate elements into one so that all the elements are unique. It is really important that you know the difference between list, set, and tuple. Uh, the uh, it, it will become clear once you use them more and more throughout uh, your programming exercises and so on. We also have the dictionary data type, which is basically a storage mechanism for key value pairs. You can have any key that represents any value, and then you can have multiple key value pairs inside the same dictionary. You can also have different data types for key, any key and value pair as shown in this example. We also have something called none type, which basically represents the absence of a value similar to null in other languages. So basically you can initialize a, a variable with none, which has no value. And maybe later the variable can be modified with a new value or whatever, uh, like however you want. Moving on to the logical statements and loops that the uh, programming language offers. Logical statements uh, uh, are basically are something like if else statements. It allows the execution of code based on the given logic. That's why we say logical statements. For example, if uh, let's say the value of a variable is 10, the num, and we execute either this print statement or this print statement based on a condition. And the condition is if the number is greater than zero, it is, uh, it is greater than zero. So we will say print, uh, we will pr be printing positive on the screen. Uh, the, uh, we will not execute the statement because uh, this condition is the if condition is true. So we will not be executing anything under the else uh, else clause. We also have and or or not operators that we can use to combine, let's say, multiple logical uh, conditions that you want to check. So let's say if you want to check both if x is greater than zero and y is less than 20, we can do that using the and operator. Similarly, we can use the or or not operator. Not is basically the negate uh, condi logical condition that we say. If we say if not x equal to, equal to zero, that means x not equal to zero. Moving on to the loops that you have. Loop is, uh, looping is basically iterating a block of code again and again uh, until like some condition probably. So in this example here, we iterate through this list of fruits. The condition is basically we will be iterating to every element and then we will iterate till we reach the end. And we will be, we will be printing the fruit, which is basically each element in this list. And this is the way, uh, this is one of the ways where you can iterate through list. You can just say for 
a variable in fruits the list you can print that variable and then you will be printing apple banana and cherry we also have the while loop uh, which is basically an another method another way to uh, do looping in python where you can say i want to repeat uh, a particular statement till the count is less than five so now the count is zero so while count is less than five i will be executing all of these statements so for every uh, so we will be doing count of zero one two three four and when the count is five the condition is not as satisfied so we will break out of the loop it's very important that whenever you use loops, there is some form of breaking condition. In for loops, generally, you will have a breaking condition, which is basically you will reach the end of the list here in this example. So there's no way to go again. But let's say when you are doing a while loop and then you do, let's say, count greater than minus one. So when you when you write a condition called count greater than minus one and the counts are increasing, this loop will run till infinity and then the code will give you an error so when you're using while loop you should be a bit cautious to make sure the loop is always broken at some point moving on so th there's something called functions that python offers functions are basically a block of code that does some per that has some purpose and that has either already been defined or you define it on your own if you look at the already defined functions, which is basically the built-in functions in Python, there are functions like print, min, max, len, range, type, etc. We have been using print in this video for quite some time. So if you uh, remember, so print is also a built-in function. It, it, it is actually doing the purpose of printing something on the screen. So that's why this function has some code behind it that is printing uh, your results on the screen, similar to the example here. You can look at uh, these functions and name should be pretty clear as to what they do. Min max is basically min and max of the list or something. You can check out this W3 schools uh, website. It has very good examples of different types of built-in functions and it's an exploration exercise for the students. There are also built-in methods that uh, Python offers. Methods are basically functions designed to operate on specific instances of a class or an object. If you want to know what is class or object, you can refer to the object-oriented programming uh, recitation that we have. But the functions related to a particular class or object are called methods. So methods are also basically functions, but they have a different purpose. So for string data types, we have different methods like upper, strip, split, and we all, for every data type, there are some uh, inherent methods that it has. Again, uh, we cannot uh, list all of the methods here. So it uh, so you should try to explore these methods and know which method is present for which data type so that when the situation comes, you are able to choose the appropriate method. So now we can have something called the user defined functions basically we can define a function as to what the code should do so let's say we can define a function here called print something where if uh, this is a very simple function where it just checks if three is less than five and then it prints a statement else it prints the statement and it returns it doesn't return anything so uh, so this is the return statement here so whenever you call print something in your code and provided you have defined this function in your code, it will always print this statement. So there's another aspect of uh, writing function, which is called recursion. Recursion is actually a programming technique where a function calls itself to solve a problem. So basically there is something called as a base case, where which, which is basically the condition that stops the recursion. And that's this recursive case where the problem basically is broken down into multiple sub problems. We solve the values of those sub problems and then use those values to solve the main problem. So let's say we have the Fibonacci series. Uh, yeah, here in the in Fibonacci is basically a sequence where the a number is the sum of the previous two numbers. Uh, if you look at the base case where Fibonacci of 0, 0, Fibonacci of 1 is 1 we write the conditions for base case. Otherwise, we return the Fibonacci of n minus one plus the Fibonacci of n minus two. So let's say when we enter the, uh, we, and we want to compute the Fibonacci of five, we can compute the Fibonacci of five based on Fibonacci of four plus Fibonacci of three. And how do we calculate Fibonacci of four? We use the same function again. We call the same function again, and we do so until the value reaches to zero and or one. 
the value will reach to one first in the in, if you are calculating from four fibonacci four fibonacci of three two and one it would return this value one and then uh, for now we have the values of the sub problems we can use the values to uh, solve the main bigger problem that we have which is basically fibonacci of five it will return uh, not the output as 120 the uh, output will be five this is a mistake on the slide sorry for, uh, for that part Moving on, we have something called exception and error handling, where you can have different types of errors in your code. Codes are prone to errors. So you should also know how to identify errors in your code so that you can debug them easily. This is very important because you cannot, uh, uh, you cannot make any other person solve your code every time you get an error. You should know the ways in which you can solve the error. And the first step is to identify the error that you have. So one common type of error is basically syntax error when you violate the Python syntax rules. So if you do not close the uh, closing bracket in a function call, you would get an error. So there can be many types of syntax errors. This is just one of them. Similarly, we have the indentation error. Python works on indentations. If you would have looked at earlier code, we had some indents in our code. So if you do an if statement, all of the code that should be executed under the if clause should be present in an indent from here. It is not, so this code will give an error again. We also have something called name error, where if we call a variable or a function that is not even defined in the code, basically the Python doesn't even know what that variable or function is, it would throw a name error. We also have the type error, when there is an operation performed on incompatible data types. Let's say we are adding a number to a string. That's not possible, right? So that will give a type error because the variable A was of string type, and you cannot do an add operation on them. That's why you get a type error. We also have the index error. For example, if you, let's say you have a list of three elements and you want to query the fourth element, the fourth element is not present. You have gone out of range of that list. So you will get the index error here. Uh, we are querying for the index three because in programming languages, the indexing starts from zero. So there's a zeroth element, the first element, and the second element. There's no third element, so we get an error here. We also have the key error. This is basically in dictionaries where you are querying for a key that doesn't even exist. Similarly, we also have the zero division error. As the name says, if you are dividing by zero, you would get an error since division by zero is uh, not possible. We also have something called the not implemented error where uh, you uh, where your code might have something like this, race not implemented error. If you have not written the function definition and you just run the code directly, you would get this error. This is one of the most common errors that students will receive in this course because when we give out the starter code for the uh, homeworks, we would uh, give you just a function def define line, which is the first line here, and then it would just say raise not implemented. So if you do not implement that, if you do not write your own code for that function, you would get this error. So don't panic. This is because you missed out on implementing a function. You should go back to your code and then check which function you are not implemented and then use that to uh, actually like write your function and then make sure your code works. This is all for this recitation. Thank you. Uh, there is, or uh, there will also be a coding exercise associated with the rec recitation. Since Python is a programming language, you cannot learn this on slides. The, this video is just uh, aimed at introducing you to the different aspects present in Python. Uh, we advise students to go through that ex exercise so that you can experience the practical aspects of Python. You will face errors on your own. You don't know what to do, but this is the perfect uh, time to learn how to write code in Python. And if you're stuck anywhere, feel free to explore uh, on the internet. You will find different resources and make sure you are very well versed, like comfortable with writing code in Python because that is super important for this course. Thank you and have an excellent rest of your day.